Hello, we're here to talk today about how to enable NAT on Windows Server 2008 R2. In this example, we have three virtual machines. One workstation on a private network with an IP address of 182.168.100.1. A Windows 2008 R2 server performing the routing and remote access with NAT option with two interfaces. One on the private side with an IP address of 192.168.100.254 and one with a public IP 65.105. .10.3. In addition, we have a web server also on the internet with an IP address of 6573200.6. Please note that these public IP addresses are used for the purposes of this lab. Let's go ahead and start. First we have a Windows 2008 R2 virtual machine and we also have two other machines running in the background. Let's go ahead and take a look at our XP client. I'll start by doing an IP config to verify its IP address. And just like it's depicted in the network diagram that I showed you earlier. Its IP address is 192.168.100.1. Its default gateway is 192.168.100.254. If we refer back to the diagram, you'll see both of these machines listed here on the private side of the network. The host name we're going to be accessing today is www.website.com. Again, this is a fictitious name and is only used in this lab. Let me start by seeing if I can resolve the name. And you'll notice it's the public IP address of the web server that we have depicted in the diagram, 65.73.200.6. Let's make sure that I cannot access it from my private network. As you notice, I can resolve the name, but uh, the ICMP packets are not making it through to the internet, which is typical for a private network. Let's also double check whether or not I can access the website and the browser is trying to access the website but of course uh, since we're on a private network without NAT we cannot access the public IP. So the next step is to go ahead and enable RAS on the 2008 R2 server. So I'll go ahead and start administrative tools, routing remote access. In this case the, the role of routing and remote access has already been added to the server. I just need to go ahead and configure the server. Go to the wizard, click next. I want the network address translation configuration. Click next. Now I need to tell RAS which is the public IP interface that's going to be used to connect to the internet. In this case, for this server, local area connection 3, and you can tell by the IP address that's on this server, 65.105.10.3. That is the public facing network interface card. Click next. Now I need to tell RAS which is my private side. In this case, I have two private interfaces. I'm going to choose this one. Local Area Connection 2, 192.168.100.254. If you recall, this is the uh, default gateway for the XP client on our local area network. I'll click Next and Finish. Now you'll notice that RAS is enabled and configured. We can go ahead and expand and take a look at the network address translation protocol that was installed. Under IPv4, you'll notice that there's a NAT component and I have my interfaces you'll see that there's more information here about those interfaces. No traffic has passed at this time. If I right click NAT, I can look at its properties and I can further configure it if needed. On the general tab, I can set up event logging. On the translation tab, I can set up more specific information about how, to, how long to keep TCP and UDP mappings. Under address assignment, NAT on the RAS server has the ability to act as a DHCP, so I could go ahead and enable it and assign DHCP addresses to my local area network clients. In addition, NAT does not require to install DNS, a server role, to provide this functionality to the internal local area network clients. I could check this box and enable the DNS proxy role for my internal network clients without having to actually install the DNS role. And that's all that's needed to configure NAT on an RS server. Let's go ahead and test out our configuration now. If I go back to my XP client, open up my web browser, and try to access the website, now I can access the website. I've created a web page to display the remote uh, IP that's hitting the uh, website. In this case, you'll notice that the IP address that's being listed is 65.105.10.3. This is not the IP address of my, my workstation. If I do an IP config, you'll see that my IP address is 192.168.100.1. The IP address that's being listed is that of the routing and remote access server's public interface. If we go back to the RAS console and refresh, you'll notice that there is a mapping. If 
I right click and say show mappings, we have more information about what is happening here. We have one mapping at this time, it's in the outbound direction. Here you see that it's coming from the workstation 192.168.100.1. It's using this private TCP port 1049, hitting the public IP address 65.105.10.3, which belongs to the public address of the NAT server. Hitting the remote address, which is that of the web server 65.73.200.6 on port 80. If I had additional clients on my internal network, all of the clients would be accessing the website using the same public IP address. In this case, the 65.105.10.3. In this configuration, based on my network design, I can have up to 254 hosts on the private side of this network accessing external resources, all going out with the public IP address of 65.105.10.3. So let's review, based on this network diagram, what's actually occurring. When the WXP workstation opens up a web browser and accesses the website, the workstation does not directly communicate with the web server out on the internet. The workstation contacts or communicates with the RRAS NAT server and the RRAS NAT server translates the private IP to the public IP address which then turns that packet routable on the internet. So from the web server's perspective it's communicating directly with the NAT server and not the workstation on the private side of the network. Well that concludes this video tutorial on how to enable NAT on a Windows 2008 R2 server. Thank you for watching.